Welcome back to our football film review. I am Michael Spath here with Benny Jopru. In our first play of the game, we're looking at 13-14 in the first quarter. Michigan runs a gets it's a gets a really positive gain right up the middle. Uh, Karan Higdon and the guard and the combo the guard play and the combos up to the linebackers really make this play, Benny. Uh, yeah, you know, we talked about last week how the offensive line was really struggling to get up to the second level. You'll see in the backside here the guard and tackle combo to the block to the backside linebacker and do a great job. And the front side, uh, they get the combo up to the uh, front side linebacker. And it's a really well blocked play on both levels by the offensive line. And I thought it was a really great way to start the game. Yeah, Bredesen gets up to the backside linebacker. Mason Cole gets up to the front side linebacker. They don't do this a lot during the game. And this is one of the, the reasons that they struggle with the running game. But here, they did it effectively. 1054, 11 minutes to go in the first quarter here, Benny. And this is what makes Michigan's defense so effective is the timing for blitzes. And when Devin Bush is using the, the holes that open up in the offensive line because they're paying attention to other players to get in there and cause disruption. Uh, yeah, Don Brown really uh, puts the offensive line here in a bind with this blitz. Uh, Third Bush is going to blitz into the guard's face and cross his uh, body into the center. And that's going to cause confusion for the guard and center. And by the time the guard and center have communicated who's going to block third bush, Devin Bush is already past the guard and getting home to the quarterback. As you can see, the man-to-man defense here, Purdue does have an open player, but Devin Bush gets there too fast in the blitz and there's no play to be made. Essentially, you still have five-on-five, but you're causing so much confusion that it's essentially five-on-four with an extra man coming. Yes, absolutely. And by the time they communicate... Like I said, it, it's too late. Many 446 to go in the first quarter. And one of the things that you and I have both been very impressed with Devin Bush is his ability to diagnose plays. What does he see? What is he paying attention to with the running back here that allows him to eventually go unblocked and get the sack on David Blau? Well, he sees the running back not really hit the hole very hard. The running back didn't do a tremendous job selling it. But you see Devin Bush actually looks at the quarterback and realizes what's happening before the running back has a chance to uh, throw the ball back to the quarterback. And Devin just goes right after the quarterback and completely ignores the running back and breaks up this play. Purdue tried to fool us once again. Uh, The defense played very disciplined here, and Devin Bush diagnosed this very quickly and attacked it and wrecked this play. About 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Michigan just had some success running back-to-back running plays uh, with Karan Higgins. So when they run the play-action fake this time, it opens up an opportunity for John O'Korn to move out into some space. And what you really liked, Benny, is that he took the man, he took the easiest throw to available to him. Yeah, he took the easiest throw almost because well, he had to with the pressure. Uh, but you do see the tight end come open late over the middle. Uh, Michigan had two really nice runs previous to this play to set up this hard play action that really worked well against the Purdue man-to-man defense. Got Pogi uh, wide open in the flat for a nice 10-yard gain on first down and making nice, easy throws for a corner. As a former tight end, Benny, I know you have loved this game and how much the tight ends got involved. And here the touchdown pass from John O'Corn to Zach Gentry at 11.45 of the second quarter. What makes this play so successful? Well, typically you're going to run a uh, crossing route with just two people. This time they run it with three people. So they're actually going to uh, set two picks here, quote-unquote picks, with the two tight ends on the right here and cause mass confusion, make uh, Gentry's defender go over the top, and that gives Gentry just enough room to get open and get in the end zone. Um, so like I said, the, the two guys, the two crossers really caused quite a bit of confusion here. Yeah, McCune and Nick Eubanks uh, get in the way of the linebackers, get in the way of the defensive backs, and it gives uh, Zach Gentry a really nice opportunity to find some open space and John Corn to find him. Where we're going to talk about a defensive play and we're going to talk about number 10, Devin Bush. And earlier in the year, uh, when Cincinnati threw some of these uh, wide receiver screens, they were able to take advantage of Devin Bush's aggressiveness. And he's kind of learned, and Michigan's done a little bit differently with where they're lining him up to make Devin Bush a playmaker on these screens uh, late in the game here. Yeah, we saw against uh, Cincinnati, Devin was typically a walk outside on the, on the tight end or running back flanked wide. And we kind of take him out of the play. And they would uh, use the other receivers to come block him. Now he's inside in the slot, and the he's left unblocked for the tackle to take. But he's just way too fast for a tackle to block, 
and he diagnoses a play. We've seen this before. We saw it a couple times against Cincinnati. We've seen it a couple times today already. And he just reacts and makes another great play. With Noah Furbush crashing the center guard gap and confusing those guys and allowing Devin Bush to get in uh, for an easy sack on the quarterback. And will teams be able to defend this? Uh, it's going to be very difficult to defend this. Um, they have perfect timing here. Furbush crosses uh, the guard's face. You know, the guard bears his head at Furbush and doesn't even have his eyes open to see Devin Bush. And Devin Bush hits, hits the open gap so fast that the guard never even sees him in this instance. And Michigan will continue to have success uh, doing this as long as the back end can cover the receivers downfield. Arguably the most important play that John O'Corn made on Saturday was this third and five, 640 to go in the third quarter. He's getting a lot of pressure from the right side. He escapes it and ends up keeping his eyes downfield to find Grant Perry for a first down. Yeah, not only that, he does a great job you know, keeping his balance with his hand. He's almost falling down twice. He stumbles, scrambles, sets up, has the wherewithal to reset his feet and look downfield and find Grant Perry for a huge first down. Not the greatest job blocking, but John O'Corn showed us something we didn't know he had in his bag of tricks. There's got to be a better effort from the running back on this play, right, Benny? Uh, I would like to see a little bit better effort. Um, I don't know. I don't think they're teaching that uh, type of blocking at Schembechler Hall. Michigan takes a 14-10 lead on a 10-yard touchdown run by Chris Evans where they use the tight end, Benny, the tight end as a decoy. Yeah, uh, great job here. Great play design. Uh, Michigan lines up in the bunch set with the three tight end or three receivers over here with two tight ends. Uh, and then on the snap of the ball, McEwen is going to come across the formation and two guys are actually going to go out and go with him, take themselves out of the play. Uh, we do a little toss sweep counter where uh, or a toss counter here to Evans, tossing the ball, make it look like we're going around the outside and he cuts it right, right at the middle uh, over the center. You think the ball was supposed to go to the outside, or do you think, or do you think that it was designed to go inside? I, I think it's definitely a, a play that's designed to go inside, given looking at the blocks of the of the uh, bunch set to the right there. We don't talk very much about the defensive backs, largely because in a normal film we can't really see the defensive backs down the field. But Purdue had a uh, camera angle that uh, seemed to be seemed to be broadcast from a blimp. And so we got a good look at David Long, who we haven't talked a lot about this year, but a lot of that's because he's just been making nice plays. And here he gets a pass breakup. Uh, this is kind of like technique sound football here, Benny. Yeah, I mean, these, are, these guys are the reason why Don Brown can bring so much pressure and put so much pressure on the quarterback because guys like Long are locked down corners currently. Uh, great technique here. Turns and runs with his man in his man's hip pocket. Puts a hand on him to kind of feel him, but he's not uh, restricting the receiver in any way. To, do, to draw a penalty, and then he turns around, locates the ball, and knocks it down. Just textbook, textbook coverage. This is Chris Evans' long 49-yard touchdown run. They pull on Wenu. Uh, they get a great lead block from Henry Poggi. Ty, Tyrone Wheatley uh, actually takes two men out. Uh, take us through this play, Benny. Oh, uh, yeah, so Michigan, uh, back to the power run game here. The front side is going to block down. The McEwen is going to kick out number 36, and Poggi is going to come and kick out uh, one of the linebackers. And he actually does a great job uh, creating a a crease. The guard comes through with no one to block. uh, And Wheatley takes his guy down to the backside with him and blocks the backside linebacker. So they have no backside pursuit. There's a big hole for Chris Evans. And it's just pure speed to the end zone. Yeah, he makes a nice little jump cut here. And it it certainly seems like Chris Evans could get a lot more run going forward. Our last play of our football film review, Benny, and one of our favorite players, Chase Winovich, Picks up his third sack of the day. What does he do well in this play? Uh, well, the, uh, Michigan runs a bit of his own blitz here. They actually drop Hurst into coverage, and um, they rush four. Um, and Winovich just pure speed off the ball. He gives the tackle a really nice, quick, fake inside move, and then dips around the edge, rips through the tackle's arms, and gets to the quarterback. Um, it's just a pure speed and hustle uh, play. It's, Plays like this, we keep on seeing from him over and over and over, and that's why he is leading the team in sacks. Leading the team in sacks.